These are the slides of various reproductive organs of the male and female reproductive systems. This slide here is actually a zoomed in cross section of a penis. So most of what you see is this sort of funky looking spongy tissue. And way up at the top, you can see an even tighter version of that tissue. That's the spongy erectile tissue at the top. And down here at the bottom, you can see an opening, and that would be the opening to the urethra, kind of near the bottom there, and that's the entire thing, a cross-section of the penis. This here is an example of the tubes found in both the testes and the epididymis. The testes are on this side. You can see the larger tubes. These are the seminiferous tubules found inside the testes where the sperm are born and live. And then over here, right next to that, you can see the larger and sort of skinnier tubes of the epididymis where the sperm go to mature. If we zoom in on the testes, now you can really see the seminiferous tubules. You can see the cells that make up the seminiferous tubules. And along the edge are the Sertoli cells. The Sertoli cells are those that actually give rise to the sperm. And these are the tails of the little sperm that are being born in the testes. Here, zoomed in on the epididymis, you can see the cells lining it are much thinner and there's a lot less going on. And that most of the sperm are actually hanging out here in the middle. So you can still see the tails of the sperm and you can see their little heads here. As they mature, they gain a better shape and a better swimming capability. This is a close up of human sperm. So here you can actually see the head of the sperm, the midsection and the tail. The head is where the genomic material lives and it's able to penetrate the egg. The midsection is where the mitochondria are to produce the energy so that this tail can keep that sperm swimming to go the extremely long distance it would have to travel. These are human sperm. These are rat sperm, which are a little bit different but very similar. They still have a head and kind of a midsection and a tail, but you can see that in this particular case, these heads are actually shaped a little bit more like hooks. Rats are very serious about their fertility. You can see the very long tails. This is an image of the inside of an This is the image of the inside of an ovary. Inside the ovary there are eggs in various stages of readiness. This here is an ovum or an egg cell, also known as an oocyte, and it is immature. You can tell because the follicular cells are all very close to it. Far over on this side, this one is getting a little bit more mature. You can see the space around it growing. And up here, there is a fully mature egg with a large empty follicle around it. This image is another ovary, only in this case, it is an ovary that would be after an egg has been released and fertilized. So here you can see the egg in a follicle. But this large structure here is the corpus luteum. It forms in an ovary after eggs have been released and an egg has been fertilized and a signal has been sent back to it. This keeps the ovary from producing more eggs, which is important because you don't want new eggs during a pregnancy, and produces large amounts of progesterone, which are important for the pregnancy. This image here is interesting because it is the inside of an ovary from a bird. So what's the difference between birds and mammals, which is what we've been looking at so far? Well, birds lay their eggs fertilized but with a complete coat on them. So you can actually see the eggs forming here. So they're, in this case, some of these are fertilized eggs and they're forming their large strengthened coats that will sit outside while they finish maturing in a nest. This ovary is an example of a monkey ovary. The previous ones with numerous eggs were actually cat ovaries. They have many eggs that are being fertilized. Monkey ovaries are probably more similar to human ovaries because humans have far less babies at once. So there's only maybe an egg and maybe a follicle hanging around at any given time as it takes a long time for one to mature and then be ready to release. This is the inside of a uterus. In the case of this uterus, it's got cells that are fairly tight together. You can see that. And this area here is actually contracted 
and ready to be used. So that would be a uterus in estrus or a uterus that is planning for a pregnancy. It has a lining and it is ready to get started. When you think of a cat being in heat, their uterus is in estrus because they are waiting and ready to become pregnant. This would be a uterus in diastrus. You can actually see that the cells look in very ways more relaxed. They have less blood vessels associated with them, there's less of a lining, and the inside opening is more relaxed. And those are all of the slides of the reproductive system.